Suppose I give you HBR that gives A. I give you HBR with upper oxide that gives me B. I give you HCl that gives me C. I give you HCl with a peroxide that gives me D. Identify A, B, C, D quickly. Now if you give only uh, solves, get your answer and then listen to what I am saying. First get your answer quickly. If you are adding only HBr on the merit of the discussion we had in the last 20 minutes, this HBr will give you Markonev cough addition because there, ha there hasn't been any peroxide given. So uh, Markonev cough addition, bromine will get attached to internal carbon. Hydrogen will get attached to outer carbon. Or uh, to say in other words, bromine will get attached to more substituted carbon and hydrogen will get attached to less substituted carbon. Because carbocation ultimately will be more stable on more substituted carbon, meaning carbon getting attached to more carbon. This carbon is more substituted carbon because it is attached to three carbons. This carbon is less substituted carbon because it is attached to only two carbons. So more substituted carbon will have a more stabilizing effect on carbocation. So carbocation will be more stable on more substituted carbon. So bromine will get attached to more substituted carbon. But in case of peroxide, there will be peroxide effect. And bromine this time will be attached to less hindered carbon or less substituted carbon. That's what peroxide effect is. That's what we have learned. In case of HCl, you're not adding peroxide. There's no question of any peroxide effect. We'll do the addition of HCl as we did. And chlorine will get attached to more substituted carbon or more hindered carbon. And hydrogen will get attached to less substituted carbon. Chlorine peroxide may be a googly because after a year when you go to a, go, go for writing your exam, you may forget that there is no peroxide effect in, on HCl. Whether I give peroxide or I don't give peroxide, that doesn't make any difference in the product because the, the steps that goes via peroxide effect is not followed by HCl. So HCl will follow anti, only Markonev-Cough addition. It will not follow anti-Markonev-Cough addition. So peroxide in this case is not helping at all. So in this case, you'll get the same product as they would have got in case you didn't take peroxide. So peroxide is not going to make any difference in case of HCl, in case of HI. This you have to remember. Peroxide effect will only be in for HBr. Fine. Now let's solve another problem. Suppose I take propene and uh, I'm adding HBr to this. I'm getting A. I'm adding HBr and peroxide to this. I'm getting B. You have to tell me what is the relation between A and B. This is pretty simple, straightforward. Uh, in order to know the relation, first see the structure. A would be simple Markonev-Cough addition where bromine will be attached to a more substituted carbon to an internal carbon. This would be A, right? B would be as per anti-Markonev-Cough addition because we have taken up peroxide. So bromine will get attached to a less substituted outer carbon. So this is A and this is B. Now you have to just identify the relation between A and B as you can see and as you can observe, as you can feel, as you can know. Here bromine is, uh, if you, if bromine is on second position, bromine is on first position. The main chain is same in both the cases. The position of substituent is different, so it's a position isomer. So the relation between A and B is a position isomer. This is also an application of this reaction. This reaction is used for creating positional isomers. Now, now we can play. I mean, I, we, I, let me let me use some reaction we have done in the past to brush up your memory. Suppose I add sodium to this, I get C. I add sodium to this, I get D. 
Now identify C and D quickly. Now this should be on your fingertips. You should know the reactions that we have already covered. Those should be on your fingertips. Otherwise, you will not enjoy what we are studying and what we are going to study henceforth. All the reactions should be intact in your mind because that's how organic is. They are all intertwined, and you're never going to ask they are also always going to give a conversion of three to four steps involving reaction from different chapters. So unless you have all of them intact together, you will not be able to solve any problem. Now, if you add sodium, you have to know this is a this is a halogen alkyl halide. And here we have alkyl bromide. Adding sodium is a reaction that is Wood's reaction, and that does does nothing but dimerization of these two alkyl halides with the carbon which is attached to this halogen. So C in this case would be this hydrocarbon and D if you do halogen uh, Wood's reaction there will be dimerization on this with this carbon and the corresponding carbon of uh, another alkyl halide and we will get a normal hexane and here we will have 2, 3 dimethyl butane. Fine. Suppose I ask you another question. Now, if I ask you to compare the boiling point of C and D based upon the physical properties of hydrocarbon that we studied, this is C, this is D. Compare their boiling point or whose boiling point would be higher. Now, we studied that the surface area in case of Van der Waals force of attraction matters. Now, there will be another normal hexane and there will be a larger area for their attraction. In this case, you will have another 2, 3 dimethyl butane and the effective surface area for interaction is of correspondingly of 4 carbon. Here we have correspondingly of 6 carbon. More attraction, less attraction. So boiling point of D would be greater than boiling point of C. Fine. Now, uh, extending this idea, let's solve a third problem.